Hey everyone, so this is a sixth tutorial of the massing series. In this tutorial, we are going to model few more uh, linear masses. So we are going to start by modeling uh, this building. Uh, it is a transport hub designed by uh, BIG. So let's start. <coughs> okay, let's start by going to the top view, double click in the top view to maximize the view. And let's start by drawing the building or the site actually. So type F, uh, F8 to open the orso. The length of the site maybe around 30 meter. So type 30 and left click. Then right click instead of pressing enter. And for the other side, I'm going to copy using the rotate tool. So I'm going to rotate it from here. And for the copy, Press in the copy, set it to S, or you can press C and tap enter to set it to S or no. So I'm going to rotate, uh, close also, and I'm going to rotate it by 56 degree. Click and then left click and then right click. Now I want to change the length of this side, so I'm going to scale it in 1D, scale 1D, select this end and then this end and then type the lens i want it to, it to be 50 meter so type 50 and left click it broke the history but it's fine in a way still i want to make sure that is uh, okay uh, uh, it became 80 80 not 30 not, not 50 i mean so we are going to scale it again choose scale one D, select this end and then this end and then type 50 then click okay now I want to draw a perpendicular line on this so I'm going to open the smart track just click it to make sure it's open choose line or polyline and it will snap uh, automatically to a perpendicular and the length of this one is going to be 11 meter so type 11 and then left click then right click instead of enter and let's draw another line here so this is uh, how the building will look in the or this, this is uh, how the side will look so now let's go to the front view or maybe we don't have to go to the front view we can double click here and go to the perspective view double click select this edge and choose copy Choose vertical, copy it to a height of 4 meters, so type 4, and left click, and then right click to finish the command. And this one is going to be uh, of a height 29 meters, so choose copy, choose vertical, select the line, type 29, and then left click, and then right click. So uh, this part is divided into three pitched roofs and this is a one pitched roof so for this one I'm going to rebuild it to have a six control point and the degree is going to be one one okay no uh, it's going to have seven control points so these zero points are going to for uh, one roof and this another thing for the third Okay, I'm going to divide this for two, three points. Have a point in the middle. So now select this point, this point, and this point. Hold shift twice to be able to select multi point at the same time. And then move them up a little bit, maybe two meter. And this one, the same two meter. Now I'm going to draw a line here. Uh, right click to bring the command again and draw line here right click instead of enter and this one are going to be to the center i'm just pressing uh, right click to bring the polyline command again so draw a few lines here here and here now i want to have a small curvature here and in these uh, lines too so i'm going to select all this line Rebuild, 
choose a degree to 3 and set the points maybe to 5 type F10 select all these points and move the gumball here so double click on this point to move the gumball move it here and start scaling it a little bit like this maybe And for this one, two double click to move the gumball, move it here, start scaling this a little bit like this. Maybe this two need to be scaled. Double click to move the gumball, move it here, start scaling to have this kind of curvature. Just escape now to create the surface, we are going just we are going to use loft, so we are going to use loft, type loft, select loft between this curve, this one and this one, right click to bring the command again, select the curves, and so on. Okay, de delete this one, again select this curve and this curve. And to create the walls, we are going to just select this edge, this edge, this one too. This one and uh, extrude everything. So we're going to uh, control shift to select the edges, set point to Z, set it to here, and select everything. Control J and merge all coplanar faces. And here we go. Okay, after I finished the 3D model, I realized that uh, the dimensions aren't right. The height is right, but uh, the, the scale in the two dimension is not right. So we don't have uh, to, uh, re to recreate everything from scratch. We can just use a scale in two direction. So of course, first we need to use the photo as a reference, as you can see. I think uh, this length need to increase maybe the double. So what we are going to do, we are select everything and choose scale to direction and start scaling this. It was 30, maybe we need to scale it to 55, maybe. Broke the oyster, but it's fine. And I think the height or the slope need to increase too a little bit. So I'm going to delete all the surfaces. Select everything. Move all these curves. Okay, not all of them. This one, this one, and this one. Let's move them up maybe 1.5 meter. And select this point. Hold shift to be able to select multi points at the same time. Type 1.5 and same thing here. This 1.5. Okay, now uh, now for this point, for this curves we need to move them up here. So we're going to scale them. So I'm going to select this one, this one. Use scale in one direction. Control tab to switch view. Let's go to the top view. Type F8. Type tab to fix the movement in this direction, and here we go. Double click, double click. So now we have our curves. We are going to repeat the process of loft and then extrude the edges. So type loft, select this edge, this edge. Uh, okay, before creating the loft, I think I need to adjust the control points a little bit. So select everything, type F10, select these points, double click to move the gumball. We can rotate the gumball too. I want to rotate it to align it with these points like this. Select this again, select everything, 10, select the points, double click to move the gumball and to rotate the gumball, double click and rotate it and snap it to the, this point. We can move this handle to uh, increase the range of scaling. So I'm going to move it like this to make it more accurate. Start scaling this a little bit. So in increasing the lens or moving the handle away make uh, the lens of the movement more sensitive. 
let's move this to double click to move it double click to rotate it snap to this point double click to move the gumball and start to move the handle I mean and start scaling here too double click to move the gumball double click to move the handle start scaling it a little bit and escape start creating loft right click right click to bring the command again right click to bring this curve to bring the command again and so on And to close this uh, base, we can select all the surfaces. Control J to join them, all of them together, and Cab to create a closed ball surface. Okay, now let's try to model something like this. So basically, to model something like this, we are going to use uh, sweep two rail. So let's start. So I will start uh, by drawing in the top view. So I'm going to minimize this view, double click here, double click in the top view and choose a curve. Type F8 to open the ORSU. Let's start here, a point here and another point here after 10 meter. Another point, 10 meter too. Then we can draw a point here maybe 50 meter another point here 50 meter press tab to uh, keep the movement uh, fix the movement in this direction and snap it to this point Tap the meter in this direction let's close a small track 10 meter here and 10 meter here too so now we can start adjusting the control points a little bit, maybe moving this a little bit like this, scaling this, and scaling all of this together. So I'm, uh, now instead of drawing a new curve, I'm going to copy this curve, so hold Alt and move using the gamble. Something like this. Select the curve and select all these control points and move them something like this. We broke the history of the copy command and it, this is fine. I will draw a reference line here. Uh, we want this length to be maybe 8 meter or 7. Mm, 6 would be fine. So left click and select this point here and press move and move them to this point. So now we are going to use uh, three profiles one here and another one here i'm using the right click to bring the polyline command again and align here so double click to go to the perspective now make sure that rec all the record history is on and let's create sweep to rail select this rail this rail File one, two, and three. Here we go. We had our surface. I'm going now to lock this surface. So press lock, or you can use it from the visibility here. Now we are going to play with the profiles to have the required height. So I'm going to move this up maybe eight meter. As you can see, the surface has been adjusted because we're already recording history. And we can select all the curves, type F10 and start playing around, maybe moving this like this or moving the control point here moving things up a little bit and this too, moving this a little bit like this up or down and you get, a, you get the idea of course so and after we finish adjusting the design. After we finish adjusting the design, we can uh, press escape, unlock everything. Now I want to create the walls. So I'm going to offset this curve. 
choose offset select the curve and let's offset it by one meter maybe and make sure that uh, cap is set to none and lose to no so uh, I want you to show you the difference between uh, lose is set to yes or no so when we set it to no the offset is accurate and the spacing is always one meter in perpendicular to this curve but the control points of this curve is going to increase if we set it to create again offset here and set loose to yes the curve is, will be uh, less accurate but it's going to be to have the same control point like this one which will make it easier to edit it if we are going to edit but we are not going to edit the curve so keep the loose option to no so this curve now i'm going to split this curve from here maybe and this one from here or trim it so type trim select the cutting object right click and trim it from here and this one from here okay uh, it is not trimming because i don't think that it's intersecting it yeah as you can see it is not intersecting this is why i didn't trim make sure that the curve is intersecting with each other trim again oh okay and the here too so control z let's throw the curves again maybe one here and another one here type trim select cutting object right click and now to close this part i want it to be uh, more continuous so i'm going to use blend curve from this in this in to have this kind of continuity Maybe I start adjusting these handles a little bit and then press OK or, or, or right click. Blend curve here too. Select these curves, Control G to join. Select these curves, Control G to join. And now uh, we can uh, add thickness to this surface. We can type offset surface up and uh, or set it to down I want you to show you something uh, if we uh, choose uh, delete input it's going to break the history of this surface but if we choose uh, not to delete it for example here I'm saying delete input set to yes so it broke the history so I'm going to cancel it and create it again but set delete input to no so this will keep uh, the record history on so when we will start adjusting the the main curve that we used the surface is going to be updated so i'm going to keep delete the input to no maybe 16, thickness 0.5 meter and here we go and now for the walls we can extrude these curves and then now trim them using this surface so type trim select the cutting object right click select the object to cut select the object to cut and then right click Broke the history, it's fine, it broke the history of this surface. But now if we select every all the surfaces, select all the surface, hold shift to be able to select multi-object and uh, log them. Now if we kept adjusting the curve, as you can see, the surface is updating, but this trimmed surface is not, so we may have to trim it again. So now keep it like this for now. And here we go. This is how to model something like this. Okay, uh, now let's learn how to design and uh, model something like this. So uh, basically to uh, the trick here is in this surface and to create this surface, we are going to uh, use a blend surface between this edge and this edge. The horizontal one and the, the horizontal one and the vertical one. So let's start. Let's switch to shaded mode. And uh, to start, we are going to start with uh, boxes. So we are going to draw maybe a box, three point, uh, three point box. Let's create the length 10 meter by 25 and the height 12 meter. Let's hold control shift to select this face and delete it. Now make sure that record history is on. I, I will just isolate uh, everything. 
I will isolate this object. So I'm going here in the visibility and isolate to hide all the, the remaining objects. So it uh, don't uh, distract us. So now select this uh, object and hold Alt to copy it. Now we can rotate it here by 180. Make sure that also is open to snap to the one, uh, to snap to the 180 degree. And let's copy another one. Hold Alt and copy it here and rotate like this 90 degree also. Make sure that also is open and move it maybe like this. So for this one, I, I the height I may I may need to increase the height. So I hold Control Shift to select the object, move it up again maybe four meter or eight meter also. And keep the others as they are. So make sure that the recorder is on. I'm going to type blend surface between this one, this edge, and this edge. Okay, press escape. Uh, it is twisted. I, I don't want it to be like this. So press escape, select this end and this end. Okay, now this is right. I will choose the tangency and we can adjust the control points a little bit. Move this handles and when we finish we can right click and for this one I'm going to create blend surface again you can type, type uh, blend surface or we can choose it from here choose this edge and this one okay this is twisted too so press escape make sure to select this end and this end so this is right and here, make sure that uh, there is no uh, intersection here. So I will need to start adjusting the handle this, the handle a little bit like this maybe. This two. So start adjusting the handle to make sure that there is no self intersections and then right click. Let's do the same thing here. Right click to bring the command again. Select this edge and this edge. There is no self intersection. Okay, it's fine. Right click. Now to create this wall and without breaking the history. So, uh, so we don't want to break the history. So I'm going to extract this edge. So we can come here and uh, double click edge. Extract this one, this one, and this one. Then right click. Then I want to uh, set, create another one here from based on these curves, but in, in 2D. So I'm going to set set point and choose Z and uh, make sure to set copy to yes. So and uh, set, snap it to here and right click. Now let's create a surface using this one and this one using loft command. So type loft, select this curve, this one and right click. And do the same thing for the others. This curve, this one, right click. Right click to bring the loft command again. Select this one, this one, and right click. So until now, we didn't do anything break history. So if we move this, as you can see, everything is updated. Now we want to create the surface here in the top. So we are going to extract these three edges. So select the double kit edge, select the three edges, and then right click. Now we are going to use sweep to rail using this one as a rail and this is a second rail and this is a profile. Sweep, type sweep to rail, select one, curve two, and this as a profile, and maybe a point here. So type choose point and point here. So this is the surface. So now all, all we, uh, all, the only part that we have to edit and all this remaining surface are going to be automatically generated since we record the history is these four boxes. So I'm going to select these four boxes and isolate them. Now, if I move this, oh. Okay. The surface in the middle uh, is not following the same shape. I will check now why. So unlock everything, delete the surface. So the curves are right. Okay, it was uh, due to the point that we used. So we are going to sweep, we are going to use sweep to rail, but without a point here. So I'm going to use this one. This is the first rail, second rail, and this is a profile. And just right click. So we have our surface. Now, if you adjust anything, as you can see, the surface is updated.
But if we looked closer, we realized that uh, this surface is not right, actually. As you can see, uh, as you can see, this part is a little bit weird. There is uh, some kind of uh, self-intersections. So I'm going to delete this surface, and we are going to create it again using uh, sweep to rail, a profile, and a point. But the point is going to be the intersection between these two curves. So there is a command called intersection. intersect so we are going to extract the point that is the result of the, the intersection of these two curves and we go to it is this point now we are going to create sweep to rail select rail 1 rail 2 and this profile and then select this point here we go we have our surface and it's clean surface right click and now if we move this one the point is going to be updating updated so the surface is going to be updated so now we all we have to do to adjust our design, select all these four boxes, isolate them, and start adjusting them uh, based on our design as we as we need. And ex uh, start experimenting different forms. As you can see, we can have a uh, very complicated shapes very easily using this method. And uh, and by the way, we could have you we could have used this uh, same method to create the walls of this project instead of uh, ex extruding and trimming the surface, because trimming uh, all, uh, breaks the history. So we can uh, create these walls in another way that uh, doesn't break the history. So let's show you how we can create it. So let's isolate everything. Let's delete this wall for now. And the surface too. So to create it, we are going to project this. I will hide the iso curves of these two. I'm going to project these uh, curves on this surface and using loft between the two. So we're going to type project, select the curves, right click, select the surface. And here we go, we projected these curves. We can find the, you can find also the project command here. We projected these curves on this surface. So now we are going to create loft between these two curves right click select this two right click so now if we move this up like this as you can see the surface is updating we can add thickness to this surface to surface of the surface create the offset up and set the uh, input to no select everything hide all the curves so now all we have to edit is this curve, this one here, here, and this. Let's isolate everything. We can edit this this part, and everything will update automatically. Can move this. Can start scaling this maybe like this. Can move this profile up. Move this a little bit more, or maybe down. And you get the idea anyway. This is why recording history uh, can be very useful in form generation and in syncing in terms of the design. So thank you for watching and see you later.